Hello! So here we are again. <clears throat> um, so what I'm going to do today is um, during the last session we well I implemented the um, finished with the multiple map support and I implemented the um, map linking. Let's take a look to that. So basically what we have now is we have multiple maps and uh, you can move in one map then use the link to go to different map and those are the two test maps we have. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to implement um, entity persistence. Um, basically, it means that, so for example, see, uh, I had killed this enemy and I had collected those two items. Um, so when I collect the items, I destroy the entity, but then when I come back, um, the code that spawns the entities is not checking that, you know, those items are already collected. So it shouldn't, um, it shouldn't spawn them again. So for some cases, I think, I'm not completely sure. I think for enemies, probably I'm going to allow for now that they respawn. Or maybe it, it can depend on the type of enemy because I don't know for the slides maybe it makes more sense I, I mean those are options that could affect the gameplay right some types of enemies can respond others can depending on the type of enemy I think that could be a, a good option um, but anyway so um, for now we need to implement um, persistence for the uh, pickups for the objects so here basically I mean based on um, on what we saw you know what I explained on my on the previous session we have this function here spawn entities that based on the type of entity equals to see this is the stuff we did uh, the previous session um, so it costs the init depending on the type. So all these types of entities are all pickups, so they go to the same init that basically they use, you know, so I know, let's take a look to the, to the tiles, to the tile set. I mean, I don't have keep open, but we can look in tile which is also shown in the tile set. So here we have the tile set. So what I do is I get this first tile as the first item, which is the key. And then it's basically your incrementing, right? So we have key, we have, um, this is a kind of health kit or med kit. So it gives you health. This is to give you extra oxygen. This is a credential, uh, the blaster. This is a battery we use for, you know, uh, it's just some objects I draw already, but I probably need to add more. Um, so the objects can be used in puzzles, like, you know, in order to get somewhere, open a door, or use a computer to do something, you need the credentials, for example. So that's very basic um, uh, key, door, uh, type of puzzle, a crowbar, so a few things. Um, so basically, they're all the same. Uh, they were the same. Uh, it's just that we start with this one, and we keep adding, keep adding base on the type. So let's go back to the code. So here we have this list and in it basically it says in the frame what is the tile that it needs to put with put screen tile and that's pretty much it. 
uh, this is the index in the tile set. So we should start the first one. So we increment one base on, on this order, you know, key, met kit, actually. Uh, in the entity configuration, so yeah, key, met kit, oxygen, credentials, blaster, battery. Well, I, I don't have the, the crowbar yet, anyway. Right, so that's really basic. And then pick up update, um, it checks for the player. Um, actually, this is quite, this, this is interesting. I didn't explain last time. Um, so player check that I have converted already in, into assembler for a speed. Um, uh, it checks if the uh, entity is visible and if it's not visible, it doesn't do all these checks that are slightly more expensive that calling to is visible anyway. Although there's no big difference to be honest, because you need to check anyway. Uh, so you know the the first check will fail anyway because px you know if the x coordinate is not within the range you know you may have one check one test you know verify one thing maybe two of them but then it fails gets out very quickly so but I think it's visible, it simplifies quite a lot because if it's not on the viewport, it's not visible, I don't need to check. So it's, it's slightly faster, but not very important. So uh, based on the type, we have key, med kit, oxygen, and they have different effects. So the key is, you know, as one key. <laughs> it adds the actual uh, tile to the invent inventory. So we see um, on the hood uh, down below, you know, that there is a, a key and you know for now i have a, a flag you know you have one key there's one key for now i, I might have different keys with different colors that could you know just make the puzzles slightly uh, more interesting um yeah the med kit uh if we don't have the maximum life then so basically if the life is not is that you know you already have all your life you don't pick up the kit so return so it doesn't uh, destroy the entity and and basically you don't collect that so you only use the med kit when when you don't have your max uh, life basically the oxygen works the same with the oxygen. Uh, I'm still not sure what it's going to be the oxygen about, but probably I was thinking that I might have a tile set so you go outside and to go outside you need oxygen or maybe in some areas of the base there is no oxygen and you need that oxygen and it will go down based on time, maybe. Um, then the blaster, you know, another flag as the blaster in by, by default, you just add the item to the inventory. So at the moment, for example, all the stuff we can collect, it doesn't do anything, it just shows in the inventory. Um, and then it's updating persistence here, and I thought this was not implemented yet, but it's here. And if it's not working, that makes me think that there is something wrong because update persistence all oh, right all oh, right so yeah okay so let's look at this but i think i know what is going on so init persistence basically setting persistence to zero persistence len is defined when we generate the map so basically uh this doesn't look right that the tags are wrong <laughs> and it's sending me to a different project. <laughs> what? No. That's definitely wrong. Let's try to regenerate it. The tags. And it's sending me to the wrong one. Hmm. I think I know what it is. It's because. Yeah, in some projects, I think it's tags or or beam beam tags right yeah if you don't have some stuff configure it as the tags to the default uh, right 
No, it's just two centimeters, right? Well, I need to fix that. Probably not now. Why is... Yeah, I have some misconfiguration somewhere. And for some reason, the only tag he's finding is in a completely different project. That is not going to be in the in the tax file in this project, right? So those are the tags of this project. Then there are not being taxed now. So those are all the tags we have. So if I generate the tags again. Oh right! Look at this. Ignoring the options in C tags. Hmm. That's interesting. Well, it generated the tags. So what's going on? And it's sending me to the wrong one. Uh. Hmm. Yeah, but this, these tags here, these are in this spread. So these are in this file, and this is in the in persistence. So what's going on? I don't know. I will investigate this. I don't want. I don't want to waste time now. But that's weird. Anyway, we know that the tags are in here in the code we generate. So persistent length is three because there are 21 entities and we use one bit per entity can be zero or one. So that means that 21, they fit in three bytes. So, so basically um, we see the persistence. No, but we are not in the right project. See, this is Kitsune. Mm -hmm. That explains why the tags are not correct. So yeah, it was getting the tags from there. Right, so now it should be fine. I think. Uh, no, let's do something. Let's remove the tags. Let's see that we don't have beam tags. We don't. So let's generate a new tags. Go there. And this is the right file. And if we go to the persistent plan, this is the right one. Okay, it's fixed. Excellent. Yeah, it's because probably Kitson Curse uh, project has some misconfiguration with the C tags, and I did something the other day. And because I have a plugin that updates the tags every time I change a file, he may have created the um, global tags in my home directory, and that's why it was working in a weird way. Anyway, so yes, so this is the persistence function. Um, so we're talking about uh, here, yes. Yeah, so we update persistence. And when we update persistence, it's basically we find which one is the right byte. And then we set the flag to one. Then we toggle the some of the function we have, we can disable that, you know. So if it was one, it goes to zero. If it's zero, it goes to one. And then we have check persistence. And I believe that the what is missing here, because we're updating the persistence for the pickups, right? It means that, oh, we go back to Kitsune. Careful with that. <laughs> Forget about that one. No, it's not forgetting about that one. Uh, okay, so the buffer is empty. Excellent. Yeah, okay, so persistence is in main anyway. Right, so, so I believe that, yeah, exactly. When we span in the entities, we are checking for persistence. And we should, because if the bit on persistence for the pickup is set, we should skip that entity, right? Let me check something. Uh, for example, the alien. Is the alien doing persistence? when he's killed uh, do, 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 do no actually no we don't kill the alien doesn't know anything about persistence because what it destroys the alien is is the player bullet 
Excellent. So the fire bullet. See, I already wrote a lot of assembler here to make things faster. So bullet versus enemies. Uh, if it's an enemy, bullet check. Then create. We create an explosion. And do 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 do. Delay bullet delay. Remove the frame to explosion. Yeah, right. So we get. Let me see. This is the direction, and this is where we get when we are exploding. Hmm. Bullet delay. I'm probably using that as a flag. Yeah, delays the explosion. See, this is what we we're talking about in the previous session. Um, you know, I have the entity. Um, the entity structure has a limited number of fields, so it bullet is not using delay. I'm using delay for other things, and I put a comment here. So it destroys the entity. Nothing here. So when you when you hit the enemy, it says the entity. So we go through the list of entities using a, another global pointer. This is an, a pointer used to iterate through the list. And it's global because, again, set ID, C, go into assembler, and then, you know, it's not very efficient. So global variables make things easier for the compiler. So in this case, this is an iterator I use to go through the uh, entities. If it's an enemy and the bullet checks, then we set the entity to unuse, so that entity will disappear. And we trigger the explosion of um, the bullet, right? But this is not actually updating the entity persistent at all. And that's what I was wanted to check. So basically, the enemies, they are currently um, not persistent. Well, nothing is persistent because we're not checking for persistence here, but they are not persistent. So, right. So we know that entities is the point that we're going to go through checking for things. Uh, you know, reading the data of the entities, process that, so we spawn the enemies. So in this case, basically, uh, we need the ID in order to check for persistence. Is that correct? Ooh, ah, ooh, let's go. So check persistence requires the ID, right? So because we know we are not touching the persistence in the case of the enemies, we can just check for the persistence, right? If check persistence, and then we know that the ID is based on that pointer is the first one so we can do so we know it's going to be there because every entity has at least four right and this is tricky and we're going to put we're going to put a comment because i'm going to abuse it this a little bit so if the persistent checks then we know that it's going to be four we know it's not true because some like the map link has have extra data, but it's just that we need to be careful to make that persistent or check here. And if it's map link, you know, move the pointer extra. But for now, uh, because we know that only the pickups are persistent, you just need to increase that. And instead of generating the entity and spawn things, the, you know, spawn the actual entity, uh, we just skip that and continue and make a comment here. Uh, if, well, how do we say that? <laughs> anyway, that's the type of comment that I'm going to forget about, like the delay, you know, sometimes you don't read the comments you write. Anyway, so, with this, basically, we should skip the entities that um, 
set the persistent flag. So if I collect that, I mean, when we collect them, we know we destroy the entities. That's why we don't see the entities anymore. So now we're going to go to the to the other uh, map. And when we come back, those entities, see, are not spawned anymore because uh, we are setting their flag for persistence. And now when we are spawning the entities uh, in here, we are actually checking that the persistent flag is set for that ID. It's simple, isn't it? So let's do another test. And so, for example, we can, well, oh, yeah, I have the key, but I don't have the blaster. So, I mean, it's just randomly. I got some error because I didn't have my error. Yeah, so this, yeah, it, it works fine. I mean, there is nothing really special about this. So I can collect that one now and go here. And, and that's fine. I think this is just working just fine. I mean, we can just do the type of last check like QA just in case, but I mean, the code is very, very simple. So let's get this one. And then move it to the other map so we can check that. Let's do this. I mean, it's going to work. It's, this is very simple. It's pretty clear. I mean, it's just that if it's minimal. Right. So, oh, we just got hit. Hmm. I probably need to adjust that blinking. I'm not very happy with it. So, we got this. We go back. The key's not here. And the other, the oxygen is not here. So I think this is just working just fine. And um, great. So this is basically, yeah, it's a very sh small change, isn't it? Well, I, I mean, I had the code already and and um, yeah, so so how do we say this? Or something like that. Excellent. So that was a simple change. The other thing is that when I finished the, the, the last session, I immediately noticed that um, that persistent was not working. You know, uh, you could have multiple blasters and multiple keys, and uh, because every time you get out and in and come back uh, to the same screen. Uh, the objects respawn and I think for those items we don't want to do that and I think this is going to be a short session so I'm going to stop here which is actually true this is a short session I've been saying that it was it was going to be a short session um, in the last two sessions and it was definitely not short so what is next um, I don't know I have a couple of things I would like to look at but um, I'm not completely sure I don't know how much time I'm going to have uh, next week at least during the week I think I have potentially two hours I can use for game dev on Saturday so I need to make a little bit of a plan what do I want to do in those two hours and maybe I may have another session during the week. So this is all for today. Um, again, remember, if 
you want to uh, follow these code extensions, you can subscribe. Um, and that's all for today. Okay. Bye.